थैंक यू धवल रिस्पेक्टेड कुलकर्णी जी डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट एंड आर फ्रेंड फ्रॉम मीडिया वी आर हियर टूडे टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट इन द लाइफ ऑफ एन एवरेज मुंबईकर आई एम रिमाइंडेड ऑफ द ईयर 1990 व्हेन जॉर्ज फर्नांडिस द देन रेलवे मिनिस्टर हैड रिलीज्ड अ व्हाइट पेपर ऑन द मुंबई सबर्बन नेटवर्क आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव सीन इट it was a very good job done and i remember that in the preface to that uh, white paper george fernandez ji ne ek kuch likha tha and that is stuck in my mind he said that railways have got very unambiguous rule about the number of animals that can be carried in a cattle wagon but unfortunately there is no such rule for human beings to be carried in a railway coach it was a very stark statement and we see daily in our commute the number of people which are accommodated in a railway coach of a suburban train which euphemistically railway has been calling a super dense crush load i don't know it's a very good way of saying that you are packed like sardines in a tin can the problems of railway suburban system have uh, been there for more than 5 or 6 decades the white paper that mr fernandez had brought gave very astonishing statistics with lot of rhetoric but no solutions and it is not surprising that many do not even remember that there was one such white paper and it was consigned to the railway archives i happen to have a copy of that even now but uh, i think that we are coming here with an idea which we feel can solve the problems which are plaguing this urban operations in the this huge town this metropolitan town as you know an idea whose time has come can never be stopped by anybody and we are very sanguine the idea that we are putting before you today its time has come the average mumbaiker needs better travel better services and a railway service which does not take lives the today's conditions in the railway trains takes a very heavy tone of uh, the health and life of an average mumbaiker So let us see what we have to provide before you. Am I next slide? I'll go into the history of this uh, system. We all know that railways made its first appearance in this hallowed ground from VT to Thane in 1853, 16th April. The Mumbai, the uh, Churchgate region saw the trains coming in 1864, and then. Uh, by 47 we were having about 500 odd trains running in the both system which is quite a large number looking to the population that existed in this town at that time but what i want to draw your attention to is that in 1928 we already had electrification on both the lines with the central railway electrification having come in 1925 why this electrification came so early when very few railway systems in the world had this electric trains running because the britishers at that time had envisaged that there would be need of a huge commuter travel in this region the way it was expanding and they had the vision or the foresight of changing from steam to electric there was no diesel traction at that time we had not yet mastered the diesel Uh, engine and having a locomotive which could draw a, a, a railway train by that time but electric trains were in operation and they were brought so early next this gives the this uh, statistics of the growth of urban traffic i will draw your attention to two facts you will find that in the last two years 
I mean, 12, 13, and 13, 14. 14, 15 figures have just been out. We, when we are preparing it, it, is, it was not available. The growth is not there. The trains are running full, and definitely people are taking to other modes of transport. But very important thing is that the average lead of passengers has doubled in 40 years. From 71 to 13, 14, you find that from 16.5, to 32.7 or you can say 33 kilometers. That means an average Mumbaikar is now traveling 33 kilometers by train every day. And it's every trip. It's a huge distance. So you can understand that how much time he spends in the trains in very difficult condition. While in 71, whatever conditions were there, the average Distance was only 16 kilometers, which could probably be covered in 20, 24 minutes. And now it will be taking 50 to 55 minutes, or nearly an hour for that man to travel. Next. These are the total number of services. And we are now carrying 8 million passengers every day in the railway services, both central and western combined. And we find that if we project the growth, the way it is happening, Though the number of passengers is not increasing, but the lead is increasing, I think in the year 2015-16, we'll find a trillion passenger kilometers on the west, the railway network of Mumbai alone. A trillion passenger kilometers, 1,000 billion passenger kilometers. This threshold will be crossed. It's a very huge number and needs a very focused attention on how we are going to handle this growth. Next. Now, this is the trans comprehensive transport survey carried out by MMRDA. And it, you will find that if we take away the 52% people who are walking to work, which may be also while they get out from the bus or train, they have to walk certain distance, you will find that about 52% commuting is in railway trains. You can understand how important the railway servant system is in the life of an average Mumbaika. That, I mean, other modes just pale before the... Uh, the figures, the histogram that you see here, it's, uh, it's nowhere close by. So that is why there is this uh, mode of transport gains of huge importance should be there in the minds of the people who are sitting in Delhi and also who are in Mumbai, that how they are going to attend to the needs of the people in this town. Next. We got MRVC in, sometime in 1999. MRVC came to help railways to get financial loans which could be catered for by the corporation, which could not be directly taken by the government. So there was a sovereign guarantee, but the loan was taken by a corporation, and it was a combination of state government and Ministry of Railway, which got involved in the formation of this corporation. If you get the joint stakeholder, this is what was very important. And we have been able to carry out a lot of, lot of works in MUTP 1 and MUTP 2, which were planned by both Ministry of Railway and the Ministry of uh, the Government of Maharashtra. And loans were taken from World Bank, which are now getting paid very comfortably. So MUTP 1 and 2 have been a great success. MRVC has brought in new quality of rakes. It has given us fifth and sixth line. It has given us uh, three-minute headway on Western Railway. The DCAC conversion, the funds could be taken. All those projects have come, and near about seven to 8,000 crore have already been invested in this system. Next. Whatever we have done now, we have to now see from the point of view of what is going to happen in the next 15 years. Next. See, in 1947, when the lead was 13 kilometers, this circle is what reflected where people were living and commuting. This continued in 50s also, but in 1985, you see the circle has an A very wide area was being served by the railways, and the lead has, had become from 13 to about 20 kilometers. And now what we are going to show why we want this unified railway zone is this circle, which we expect would be very 
uh, in a very intense manner, thriving with activity, with the uh, economic activity in this region. And this is going to be about 10 times more than the area which is being served by the present system. Now, when this area becomes so large, we expect that the lead will go up to about 50 kilometers. And if the lead is going to be 50 kilometers, how we are going to attend to the need of the passengers at that time in 2025? Apart from that, you find that both western and central regions, you see, this is the western line, this is the central line. They are diverging in this area, they are diverging from each other. So there is a huge hinterland between the two, which is not going to have any suburban system. And we do not want that we give them what they need only after an agitation, only after a lot of human cries raised. We anticipate this problem, which will come in 2025, and we feel that a unified railway zone, if it is brought in now, will be in a position to attend to the needs of the people in 2025, because they will have about 8-10 years of working, and many problems which may rear their head in 2025 would be nipped in the bud if this action is taken. So we think that the time for creation of a unified suburban railway zone has come. It is now that we have to take an action, rather than taking that action 10 years later, when a lot of miseries are faced by the people. And we hope that uh, the report that we have published uh, or uh, presented before you will be seen in proper light. And there would be understanding in both among the people, among the activists in the town and the government that the unified suburban railway zone is a must and we should get it as early as possible. Next. This is the growth of population which is taking place. You can see Thane, the growth, and you see this uh, Vasai Virar section, the growth that you see from 91, then 2001 and 2011. The Vasai Virar growth is stupendous. Now, how are you going to attend to this growth? This is, and this has to be linked with New Mumbai. It has to be linked with Panvel area where the new township is coming. It has to be linked with a smart city which we are planning, somewhere even beyond. And all that will be possible only if there is a unified zone where a general manager sits and thinks in a focused manner about the needs of the people of this region. This growth otherwise is going to get very little assistance from the railways and people are going to be put to enormous hardship in their daily commute in another 10 years time. Next. <coughs> so now I'll recap recapitulate how, what we have been saying that uh, overloading we all know 3,000 to 3,000 people traveling in the train and it is leading to people dropping off from the coaches and getting killed uh, during that time of the commute. Next. Now, I hope I have made it amply clear from the way I have presented my thought is that uh, if uh, there is a unified zone and they understand that the overcrowding has to be reduced, and it has to be tackled on a war footing, then definitely this kind of uh, debts on tracks would be very well attended to in a focused manner. Next. The east-west connectivity, which will become very important in another, it is already important in another five, six years time. It is going to be very seriously affecting the life of the people. And we have a solution. Dedicated freight corridor is coming, which, is, which will take away the freight trains from the existing Vasai Diva section onto the dedicated freight corridor. So I think action should be initiated for converting that into a suburban uh, network right from Vasai to Diva and up to Panvel. And there will be margin for that. And if we introduce automatic block section on that route, definitely we will be able to run a few hundred trains on that. Maybe it will take five, six years. But the work will start only if we have a unified suburban railway zone. Next. 
This is the area, 10 times area that we are going to serve. We'll go to the next slide. Now, uh, freight earnings are very important for every zone and the general managers have to remain busy with that. So both Central Railway and Western Railway have their prime attention on the freight earnings and the long distance train running. Once we have a unified servant railway zone, the general manager will have nothing else to do but to look after the uh, servant services, which constitute 35% of the passengers being handled by the railway system daily. The Indian railway systems, 35% passengers are actually here in this town. And that has to be given proper attention by the uh, general manager. If he is of the unified zone, he will have time to do that. All kinds of work that uh, general managers have to do, they, it is very difficult for them to attend to uh, the local train uh, problems. And uh, uh, then we will have uh, the segregation is a problem which uh, the, both the railway zones will tell you that long distance uh, train will uh, get affected. We think that already a lot of segregation has taken place due to MUTP 1 and N2. Another two, three years time, proper segregation would be available. So the freight operation has already been uh, reduced to more, less than one tenth of what it was 10 years ago. Hardly two or three trains come inside the, uh, the town for the terminals which are there. Most of the terminals are on the periphery. You have uh, uh, Turbhe, you have got uh, near Panvel, two, three terminals have come up. And you have one Jogeshwari terminal, one train comes there. This can be very easily handled by the unified zone by deciding that in night time one train will come and go. And long distance trains can be very easily handled with the proper running of fifth and sixth line. So we think that it is now very ripe for proper segregation. It should be, in, the work should be immediately initiated and we must uh, start thinking in direction of attending to the needs of this town in a in a very intensely focused manner. Next. And last point, we already have a zone for Kol Kolkata Metro. It has, I mean, hardly one tenth of the, service, the passengers that we handle here, and it is a proper zone. Calcutta Metro is a proper open line zone with a general manager working there. We think that same kind of arrangement has to be given to Mumbai now so that. Uh, the problems can be resolved very well. These are other uh, needs of the general managers to perform. And uh, again, it takes away a lot of time of the general managers. So if we have a general manager only for the suburban system, he will have time for looking after the needs. Next. The challenges are there. I've talked to you about the, the Freight operation and long distance segregation is possible. The maintenance of assets, we've discussed in the, that uh, most of the maintenance is by machines. Machines are shared among zones, even today, with 17 zones running. There are many uh, zones which are sharing machines. So this zone also, a new zone can share the machine with either Central Railway or Western Railway, because both the Central and Western Railway will remain. They will remain only the Mumbai suburban system the Bombay Central Division and VT Division, these two will amalgamate to form another zone. So the machines can be shared with them and maintenance should not be a problem. The financial viability, both things we have discussed, that we will have uh, the serving of the, uh, the good sheds which will be there, that will give us, uh, the new zone will get the, uh, the daily earnings will come from there and there is need for changing the fare box collection. And I think an average Mumbai car will like to give more if it is, is given a better service. Already there are better coaches, there are a number of trains, already 1,618 trains on Central Railway are running, 1,300 trains are running on Western Railway. I think that uh, fare box collection from Mumbai area has to improve to make this viable and it is possible. It is not a very difficult thing. And once a general manager is there only to look after that, he will chase the railway board for having his fair share of earning from the passenger operation as well. 
and iftaf relocation is not going to be a problem it will remain in mumbai both the divisions are in mumbai so it will remain in the mumbai town and we have already done relocation in 2003 when seven new zones were created we have very good experience of that when relocation was across the boundaries of states here it is within the boundary of a metropolitan town so there should not be any problem only seniority lists and all uh, will have to be revised and that can be done without any difficulty next so now our request is to the honorable railway minister that he should announce this in the coming budget in february 2016 a new zone for mumbai suburban a unified zone for the mumbai suburban system must be announced in this budget and uh, we have given the logic for that i think that uh, it should be possible for him to accept it thank you